You may have heard that the Sony A9 Mark III just introduced the world's first full frame global shutter sensor. And that's certainly not all that this camera has to offer. They've got new improved ergonomics. We've got the flippy, tilty, whatever you wanna call this screen. That's the best one that Sony makes. We've got pre-capture mode where you can start buffering photos before you even hit the shutter. We can shoot in 120 frames per second in raw photos. I even made a whole other video on some of the less noticed features of the A9 Mark III a few months ago, if you wanna check that out. But without a doubt, the most exciting part of this camera is the one that opens up the door for a bunch of other new features as well, and that is the global shutter. So what is global shutter and why is it exciting? Secure the cup, and let's get into it. Digital cameras usually operate with something called a rolling shutter. What this means is that the sensor reads out the image one line of pixels at a time from the top down to the bottom. And it's easier to do it this way because the camera has less work to do at any given time, even though it's still doing it really, really fast. A global shutter sensor, on the other hand, captures every single pixel on the whole sensor all at the same time. Now, the problem with rolling shutter is that if something is moving quickly through the frame of your shot, it might be at a different place by the time the sensor is done capturing that image than it was at the start. That's what we get what is referred to as a rolling shutter effect. And for my younger audience, it's kind of like that TikTok filter where the line goes down through the screen and you can move to get warpy, weird images, but just a lot faster. This can show up as the distortion of objects or kind of wobbly jello effects in video. Having a camera with a global shutter means that you won't get any of this distortion because again, it's capturing every single pixel all at once. So regardless of how the subject or the camera is moving, you will perfectly freeze that moment in time. Take for example, this shot of a drumstick. On the rolling shutter camera, you'll see that the drumstick gets warped so it's no longer a straight line. Whereas on the global shutter camera, you're going to see that it's still a perfectly straight drumstick. Or in this example where we're moving the camera, you'll notice that the straight vertical lines are getting distorted because of the speed that we're moving the camera. Now think of this in something like an action movie where they've got handheld camera, they want that shake because they want it to feel a little crazy, but instead of it being a nice consistent shake, it's this weird wobbly warpy thing going on. Weird wobbly warpy. But removing that distortion and wobble isn't the only door that having global shutter unlocks. The global shutter allows the A9 Mark III to shoot up to 1 80,000th of a second shutter speed, which is 10 times faster than my flagship Sony Alpha 1. This can be useful for creative reasons if you're trying to capture something that's moving ridiculously fast, or it can be handy when shooting in a very bright environment. That being said, if you're using an aperture wide wider than f1.8, or if you're in a burst mode on the A9 Mark III, this will slow that maximum shutter speed down to 1 16,000th of a second, but that's still really, really fast. It's literally double what the A1 is. And speaking of those bright environments, the global shutter also opens up a world of possibility when shooting with flash. Like as in, there basically are no limits anymore. With a rolling shutter camera, you have to be careful when shooting with a flash to properly sync it and know the limits of your camera. Most cameras can only sync with flash up to 1 250th of a second shutter speed. The Alpha 1 actually goes up to 1 400th of a second. If you fire off a flash with too high of a shutter speed with a rolling shutter camera, you could end up with part of the image fully illuminated and the other part of it dark. Now, there is something called high speed sync that allows for using higher shutter speeds than your camera's typical flash sync speed, but it's at the trade-off of flash power. However, with the global shutter on the A9 Mark III, you can use your flash at any shutter speed without having to worry about any of this. Again, because of the ability to read every pixel at once. So now we can be using flash in bright environments to overpower the sun at 1 80,000th of a second, or if you're in one of those situations, 1 16,000th of a second, and it'll work fine as long as the flash is compatible. So this is a huge thing for flash shooters and opens up a whole possibility of what can be done with cameras and flashes. Now, while removing distortion, 
extremely high shutter speeds and flash sync capabilities are probably at the top of the global shutter exciting features list, there are also a couple of smaller things that it also adds. One of those things are the anti-flicker functions that are improved from other cameras. Certain lights and electronic devices can cause flickering in your photos, and similar to what we talked about with the flash issue, the global shutter can help to get rid of this in your images, in combination with some in-camera anti-flicker settings. The other thing that global shutter introduces is a complete removal for any need of a mechanical shutter. There is still technically a curtain in the A9 Mark III that can be used as an anti-dust function, but as far as I could find, there's no way to actually use the mechanical shutter anymore, nor is there any need for it. Rolling shutter cameras, including other Sony cameras, could often use a combination of mechanical and electronic shutter depending on the shooting situation and what worked better. But with the global shutter in the A9 Mark III, there is no need for a mechanical shutter at all. This means that there will be less wear and tear on the internals of the camera since there's no mechanical shutter subtly jiggling everything with every shutter actuation. And with less tiny vibrations from each shutter count, you're more likely to be guaranteed sharper photos as well. So the question is, now that we have global shutter in one camera, do you need it? And the answer is, Probably not. The other cameras that are on the market with rolling shutter functionality generally will cover the needs of 98% of the photographers and videographers out there, either because the sensor readout speed is fast enough already that the rolling shutter artifacts just aren't an issue, or because the user doesn't shoot the type of photos or videos that make them run into those problems at all. But for the other 2%, you now have an option. And those 2% should definitely be aware that there are some trade-offs. For example, this camera has a higher base ISO of ISO 250 or ISO 2000 in S-Log3, and some people have been noticing that the A9 III has a bit more noise than some other competitive offerings, Sony or otherwise. But in the end, if you're considering an A9 Mark III, you'll have to do some more research and decide whether this new functionality is worth it in your specific case. But regardless, the introduction of a global shutter sensor to this kind of camera is super exciting to me personally, even though it doesn't necessarily suit me. But let me know down in the comments, are you excited about what global shutter means for the future of cameras? And if you wanna know some more about the A9 III, check out this video here. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button for more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.